As we've been talking about in the last few videos, God wants us to be people who are different than the world. People who are holy. That's what the word holy means. It means we are different. We're not like them. He wants us to not be influenced by the world. He wants us to not adopt their views, their lifestyle, and their values. Paul said we shouldn't be conformed to this world. Okay, God wants us to be people who seek first the kingdom. Seeking it first means it's our biggest priority. It's what comes first in our decisions and how we choose to spend our time, our money, and our energy. Seeking first the kingdom means it's what we live for. It's what our decisions are centered around. It's what our money is spent on. It's what our time is given to. We build our lives around the kingdom. As I mentioned in an earlier video, if you work a normal 9 to 5, Monday to Friday job, and I call you up to see if you want to do something at noon on a Wednesday, you're probably going to say no. Because you prioritize work. Work is what pays your bills. It gives you food. It gives you a house. It gives you clothes. So you're not going to jeopardize it. You're not going to risk losing your job. So your job is a higher priority than hanging out. Between those two things, you're seeking first your job. Your decisions about what you're going to do with your time show what your priority is. You might say, yes, I want to hang out, but you choose your job. Your actions, your priorities show what you're seeking first. And we've talked a little bit about what this looks like on a small scale, what you do day to day. But it's really important that we recognize what this looks like on a bigger scale. What are you doing with your life, your whole life? What are you working toward? What are your goals? What are your big decisions based on? In order to look at this, we got to look at what the average Christian life in America looks like. What does life typically look like for a Christian in America or quite frankly in the entire Western world? So this is what life currently looks like for most Christians. As a kid, you grow up under the authority of your parents. During this time, you usually spend most of your time going to school, doing homework, and studying. As you get older, you start getting a little bit more freedom. You start dating. You start working a job. You start planning for your future. You start thinking about things like, where do you want to go to college? What do you want to be when you grow up? Stuff like that. After you graduate high school, you now have the freedom to start making some big decisions for yourself. You go to college, you get a degree, you get a job, maybe you get married. You're starting to build your own life. Eventually, you end up settling into a career. With your career, your goal is primarily to make what you need to provide for your family. But you also want to make sure you're giving your family the best life you can give them. You generally also want to have a decent retirement package and you want that nice work-life balance so you can spend the right amount of time with your family but also still make sure the bills get paid. Primarily, your career is about providing for yourself and your family. Secondly, your career is about planning for retirement, so you'll have what you need when you stop working. And thirdly, your career might be about something you enjoy. It makes you feel fulfilled. It makes you feel like you're contributing to the world. It's something you want to do. But that's not as high a priority as making sure you have what you need, so some people don't always end up in a career like that. As you work your career, you also raise your kids. Or perhaps your spouse works while you raise the kids full time. 
Raising kids has its difficulties. It's exhausting. It consumes a lot of time. Kids are expensive. You often worry about their safety or their futures. But having kids is also very rewarding. You love watching them grow. You love watching them learn. You love watching them learn how to walk, how to talk, how to think. You love spending time with them and you love having them around. After about 30 years or so in the workplace, you or your spouse retires. By now, you've saved up enough in whatever retirement plan you chose. Hopefully, you'll have what you need for the rest of your life and you can sit back and enjoy no longer having to work all day, every day. Typically at this point, you'll have grown kids who are starting to have their own families. And maybe you'll make sure that you're living near them so you can see your grandkids and you can keep your family close together. Eventually, you die, but you've lived a long life. You provided a good life for your family. You had what you needed through retirement. You saw your grandkids start to get older. You saw them start to make their own decisions. Life was good. Oh yeah, also, throughout this whole time, you were reading your Bible. You went to church. You prayed. You sang worship songs. You, you went on missions trips. You evangelized. You faithfully gave 10% of everything you made. Okay, so that is the average Christian life in America and in much of the Western world. It's the life almost all Christians plan, and it's the life almost all Christians experience. So keep that in the back of your mind for a minute. We're going to come back to it. All right. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate. The gate is wide, and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And many people enter through that gate. But the gate is small, and the road is difficult that leads to true life. Only a few people find that road. Here, Jesus is describing two roads. One road is wide. It's easy. It's got a wide gate at the end. A lot of people choose that road because it's wide and easy. But that road results in destruction. The second road is narrow. It's difficult. It's got a small gate at the very end. The road is full of hardships. It's full of trials. This road results in life. But only a few people find that road and only a few people go down that road. Which of these two roads are you on? Most Christians are familiar with this passage. But most Christians make a mistake when they think of this passage. They make the mistake of thinking that the broad, easy road is a road with no difficulties at all. So then they look at their own lives and they look at the difficulties in their own lives and they assume that they're on the narrow, difficult road. I've heard a lot of Christians talk about the trials in their lives. They talk about things like raising kids being tired from raising kids. They talk about having to find a job or passing a test or getting good grades. They talk about getting a raise at their job or being laid off from their job. Or they talk about sickness. They talk about death. They talk about how they're going through a trial. They talk about being tested. But there's a problem. All of those trials are common to life. Even unbelievers face all of those same exact trials. So if Jesus is saying one road is easy and one road is difficult, are those the difficulties that Jesus was talking about when he said that the road is narrow and difficult that leads to life? Let me give you an analogy. I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. I lived about an hour north of D.C., and if I ever found myself wanting to leave D.C. at 5 p.m. on a weekday, it was awful. Almost 
everyone in the city chose the same road. It's a broad four or five lane highway called I-495. And if you choose I-495 as your route to get home, you are choosing to sit in bumper to bumper traffic for what seems like an eternity. People are cutting in and out recklessly. Lanes are merging. Sometimes you have to get across all four lanes in order to get to your exit. There are often accidents and when there are accidents, they close one or two of the travel lanes, making traffic even worse. No one likes driving home on that road. No one thinks it's an easy drive. But now let's imagine that there's another road, a second option. We'll call this road Forest Road 7. This road also leaves Washington, D.C. It also goes north. It's also a possible route to get home at 5 p.m. But this road is unpaved. In some places, it doesn't even have gravel. It's just dirt or even grass. It's full of potholes. It's got steep inclines. It's narrow. Sometimes it's barely even wide enough for your car while it travels along a steep drop-off that would send you plummeting into the Potomac River. And there's no guardrail. At some points, the road is overgrown because it's so hardly used. You might have to get out occasionally with a machete and chop back some of the bushes that are growing out into your path. Sometimes you'll come across trees that have come down across the road and you'll need to get out and move them before you can keep going. Also, due to new environmental laws, you're not driving a Jeep or a pickup truck. You're driving a Prius with low clearance and thin tires that really weren't meant to roll over potholes and large rocks. Okay, with these two roads as your only options, which road will most people choose? Which road is the broad and easy road? And which road is the narrow and difficult road? A lot of times, Christians look at their lives they see difficulties and things that make their lives hard and they assume they're on the narrow, difficult road because of those difficult things. But what they fail to recognize is that all of those difficulties are things that any unbeliever might also face. When Jesus said the road is broad and easy that leads to destruction, he wasn't saying that it's a road with no difficulties at all. He was saying that when you compare the two roads, one of them is clearly broad and easy compared to the other. Okay, I-495 is no picnic. It's not fun. You don't want to go down it at 5 p.m. on a work day. It's awful, but it's way easier than trying to drive home on Forest Road 7. If Christians think that they're facing trials and difficulties, but those trials and difficulties are no different than any unbeliever might also face, are they facing the same trials and difficulties that Jesus was talking about when he told us about the narrow, difficult road? Or are they merely facing trials and difficulties that are inherent in life? Because we live in a messed up world. Life is hard. What road are they really on? If Christians are convinced that I-495 is the difficult road, they might not even realize that Forest Road 7 exists. They might not even realize there's another way, a harder way. So now let's go back to the average Christian life in America. When a Christian goes through life, how are they making all of these major decisions? And other than the fact that they were reading their Bibles and going to church throughout their whole life, how was their life any different than an unbeliever's life? 
based on what Jesus said about the narrow road and the broad road, the Christian life is supposed to be so different that an unbeliever's life looks easy and trouble-free. So if that's the case, then why is it that the Christian life and the unbelieving life look almost identical? Okay, an unbeliever is brought up as a kid, goes to school, studies, starts dating, gets a job, plans their future, goes to college, gets a degree, starts a career, gets married, raises kids, pays the bills, saves up for retirement, tries to spend time with the family, eventually retires, sees their grandkids, stays close to family, and eventually dies, having lived what is generally accepted as a good life. The only thing that separates a Christian life from an unbeliever is that they read their Bibles, they go to church, and they do all these Christian things. But we've already seen in earlier videos that when Israel was apostate and when the Pharisees were living in hypocrisy, they also did all of those quote-unquote Christian things. So clearly that's not what God's looking for. And those things are not what's supposed to separate us and make us different. And honestly, those Christian things don't make our lives so hard that an unbeliever's life looks easy. So what makes the true Christian life so different? What makes us holy? How are we supposed to be completely different in how we live our entire lives and make all our major decisions? Well, in order to look at this, in the next few videos, we're going to break up the average Christian life into three categories. Work, family, and ministry. And we're going to look at what the Bible says we should be doing with each of these categories. And what it means to seek first the kingdom in everything we do. As I said earlier, I can't cover every aspect of life. But these are three major areas that we build our lives around. And we need to see what the Bible says we should be doing when we make these kind of major decisions. And the same concept that I'm applying to these categories applies to every other category in life. So let's get started and look at what does the Bible say about work, family, and ministry. We'll see you in the next video.